Okay, so hi guys, uh, my name is Joseph, and uh, so what we have been working on at Chronologic. I'm a developer at Chronologic, and what we do is we do uh, time sensitive operations on the blockchain. To get us started, I would just like to ask you guys how many of you guys are developers? Raise your hands if you're a developer. Okay, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you know what a blockchain is. What, sorry? If you know what a blockchain is. How many do you think? Okay, so uh, let's keep it simple then and uh, we can get straight into it. So, um, so what we've been, uh, what we'll be talking about today is scheduling transactions on the blockchain. So scheduling is something that we take for granted in our current uh, financial systems. And it is basically, um, you delay a transaction to happen at a certain point in the future. So let's say you want to uh, schedule a transaction to happen tomorrow morning, and you want to send money to your parents. And uh, you don't want to stay up, um, stay up all night or um, stay up in the morning and run this transaction manually at the exact time that you wish to do this, but you want to schedule this transaction and you want to be sure that it will get executed at this exact time. So um, while this is uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy on our current financial systems, it gets a bit trickier on the blockchain because blockchain is, uh, it is a trustless system. I, I, I assume many of you guys have heard of Bitcoin, of cryptocurrencies, so um, what blockchain, blockchain allows is a um, decentralized and trustless way, trustless way of managing money, of managing um, this, uh, these um, digital assets. So, um, so because of the nature of the blockchain and how it has been built, there is no native way to schedule transactions, to say, okay, I want a Bitcoin transaction to happen at this time, tomorrow. So um, basically, uh, the whole of today's talk is how we at Chronologic have um, found a way to uh, to make sure that a transaction happens at the same time, uh, at the uh, exact time. So the problem is, how can we guarantee that the transaction will be executed at this certain point in the future? So. Uh, Let's also mention why we're doing this. So, since it's the blockchain, we uh, we need a decentralized and trustless way of doing this. There ha there have been a couple of tools that you can use today that allow you to schedule transactions, but they are all centralized. They require you to have a computer running and have a certain software running on, on this computer, which will then uh, has to be up and running at this exact time when the transaction has to be executed. So um, what we want to accomplish is just a simple way to say, okay, I want the transaction ha to happen at this exact point in time, and just leave everything to the blockchain, to the uh, to, to this like trustless network. So so there has been a smart contract protocol called the Ethereum alarm clock, and it was developed in 2015 by a guy named uh, Piper Merriam who is now working at the Ethereum Foundation. And he built a protocol that allows you to, ex to do exactly this. It allows you to um, schedule a transaction and make sure that it gets executed at this point in the future. So um, unfortunately, it never really took off because of the high cost of, of gas, of Ethereum, and there were not many Ethereum developers at the time using this technology. And after a couple of uh, denial of service attacks in 2018, the, the service, service kind of died out. He never ever got it up and running again after these uh, uh, service attacks. So what we have done is we have partnered with Piper to resume development on this protocol. Why did we do this? Because it is something that we consider is, is very worthwhile and uh, something that we ourselves need in our own projects. So, um, so what are some of these use cases of these protocols? Let's say you want to contribute to an ICO. Hopefully you guys know what an ICO is. So it's basically a, um, it's short for initial coin offering, and it is a way of gathering funds 
Um, and it, it is mostly done by blockchain startups. So they say, okay, we want to gather a certain amount of funds and we give you these tokens in return for your investment in our project. So, so the thing about these ICOs is they, um, they allow for a worldwide audience of contributors. So anybody, so you, if you're from Croatia, you can contribute to a project that is in China with, without any difficulty. And, um, and but the problem is if, if the ICO starts at at, uh, at one uh, let's say at six p.m. Uh, Chinese time that might be a little bit too early for you and you might be still sleeping so we don't want to stay up all night just so you can press a button and say okay I, I want to contribute to this ICO instead you can use this protocol and you can schedule a transaction to say at this exact time send this contribution to this smart contract and basically the Ethereum alarm clock protocol takes care of everything else, and you can go back to sleep. <laughs> um, another use case would be recurring payments. So let's say um, you want to donate to a charity once a month. So on every 10th of the month, you want to contribute a certain amount to a charity, but you don't want to always be kind of checking this and making sure that this happens by you know, opening your wallet and then sending these transactions from your wallet. You can schedule these transactions in advance with the Ethereum one block, and then you don't have to worry about this anymore. Um, and a third thing that uh, we find as a use case for this is smart contract integration and automation. For example, um, since this protocol is based on the blockchain, it can also communicate to other smart contracts. And uh, we'll get into it um, into a bit more detail on what a smart contract is uh, a bit later. So, um, now that we know what the Ethereum alarm clock is, what is the use case, let's get into how it actually works, how the system works. So, um, this Ethereum alarm clock protocol works on the, on the Ethereum blockchain. And since the Ethereum blockchain is the first large-scale blockchain that incorporates this idea of smart contracts. And, um, and you have two types of accounts on this Ethereum blockchain. The first one are users. These are humans, just as you and I. And, um, and we hold accounts, we hold um, wallets on this system. That, um, um, and you can use your wallet to send transactions, to send some money to your friend, to a beer, to, your, to a buyer, to a seller or something. And, uh, and these user accounts are controlled by users who have their own private keys. Private key is kind of like your secret phrase that, you, um, that guarantees that you, only you have control of your money on the blockchain. And another type of accounts on Ethereum are the smart contracts. So smart contracts differ from user accounts in a, in a small way. Um, they are not controlled by a private key. There are no private keys. But they are basically just like the computer program software that you upload to the blockchain. So it is a piece of code that runs on the blockchain and, uh, and what does every piece of code do? It takes an input, it gives you an output. Right? So this is what smart contracts do. This is, um, it, they, they say, for example, if somebody sends a, this much payment here, you, you can build some sort of logic around this and then let's say distribute this payment or do whatever you want um, with these smart contracts. So now that we have like this clear distinction between the users and the smart contracts, let's get into um, the architecture of the Ethereum alarm clock and um, how it works. I know it's, it's a little bit hard to see from, <laughs> from uh, a bit far away, but um, I'll try to make it simple. So from, from one side of the system, we have the users. Do you, what do the users want? The users want to make sure that their transaction gets executed at their desired time. On the other side, we have these people called, we call them time nodes. Time nodes, you can kind of relate them uh, to miners in the blockchain. How many of you guys know what, what miners do? Or uh, So miners keep the blockchain alive, they keep the network alive. They run these uh, custom off-chain software that uh, verifies transactions, does all this stuff. And, and on top of this blockchain, we have these time nodes that are also 
off-chain clients. They are pieces of uh, software that uh, anybody can run, you and I, anybody can run on their machine. And this, these time nodes will make sure that these transactions get executed at, at this correct time. So um, how does this work? So the user schedules a transaction. They say, I want to send um, X amount of money to um, an address of my friend. And then, and then um, once they do this, they, uh, they use our software here, which I will demo a bit later. Um, th there is a, a new smart contract created on the blockchain that represents this scheduled transaction. And it's, it's basically, it just deploys a piece of code to the, to the blockchain. And this piece of code, basically, um, it, it kind of um, holds the funds that uh, needed to be sent, sent to, the, uh, uh, to the destination. And, um, and it also holds, it also takes a small bounty. It asks for the user to input a bounty. And a bounty is kind of like a, um, incentivization mechanism for for these time nodes. What do I mean by incentivization? So these time nodes are incentivized to execute these transactions. They're incentivized to, if a user schedules a transaction to be executed, this time node says, okay, I will be the one to execute it, and I will make sure that my, um, my machine, my software is running at that time, and I will execute this transaction in, in exchange for a small bounty. So that's why we kind of think of it similar to miners, because miners, they uh, verify these transactions, they, uh, they make sure that the network is alive in exchange for, um, for a reward, for a block reward in the blockchain. And um, the time nodes do a similar thing. They gather these bounties. So they're incentivized to run these software because they get paid for them. So, so it is a... Um, Incentivization mechanism similar to the blockchain, but it is on another on another level. Hopefully that that wasn't very. Um, uh, hopefully you guys got the point. Um, so basically, um, the idea is that. Uh, so the idea is that uh, this system is crypto economically sound. What does this mean? It means that it's um, the, these time nodes are incentivized to. Um, to, uh, to, get, uh, to run this software because they get paid in bounties. The users are incentivized because it gives them an option to schedule transactions for, for the future. And, uh, and the system, in a way it's designed, it guarantees that there will always be someone running a time note and always be someone who will earn these bounties because of these incentivization mechanisms. You can read more on the, on the blog post. I'll post a few links later as well. So, um, besides working on the core protocol that we have um, built in collaboration with, um, with Piper Merriam, we have also developed a number of tools that allow developers or anybody else to get started with uh, scheduling transactions on Ethereum. So, um, we have, um, there, there is three different tools that we have built. We have built a library that interacts directly with the Ethereum OneFuck uh, protocol. There is a client uh, library that allows you to, to build your own time node software. So anything, everything we do at Chronologic, everything is open source. So anybody can go to a GitHub page, they can fork the repo, maybe they can make something better, you never know. But um, we want to get developers working on this. We want to get uh, people using this because there is a large use case for this. Uh, one of the use cases that I haven't mentioned is decentralized exchanges, and this is something that will be very big soon, uh, uh, soon, as soon as we get all the pieces together to build these. And we think that scheduling is a core piece of, uh, uh, of technology that should be used. Um, okay, let's skip through these. So um, I'll go through a short demo of our Kronos app. So, our Kronos app allows you to um, to have a seamless way of interacting with the Ethereum Alpha protocol, seamless way of scheduling transaction uh, for the future. So um, maybe we can, we can get into the demo. I can show how it works. Maybe it will give you a better idea of, of 
This is the screen up. Okay, I think this should be good to go. Okay, so um, this is the Chronos tab. And um, if we go here on the left side, if we open the menu and we click schedule, we will see that. Um, let me just let me just lock my cup. We can see that there is here we have a wizard, and it basically says schedule transactions. So what you can do here is you can you can choose the time zone in which one you want each, in which you want to schedule this transaction. In this case, we use Zagreb. Even a bit bigger. Okay, let's make it even bigger. Um, we have we, you can use the uh, you can select a date of the transaction that has to be executed. Let's say let's execute this transaction for June 13th, and you can choose the time as well. So if we choose let's say um, let's say 7:21, and um, what you can choose here is the execution window. So because of the way that the blockchain is built. We cannot really guarantee that the transaction will be executed at the exact second. The lowest, uh, basically, time execution window that we could get to is five minutes. So we can we can guarantee that the transaction will be executed within five minutes, but most of the time, it is within. Is it? A minute. Does it start before 1921 or from 1921 to from 1926? Yes, from. So uh, in most cases, it will get executed exactly at this time. But due to some unforeseen circumstances, like network congestion, or not, it might happen that it might get executed. But it won't be canceled. It will not be canceled because of the way that it has been. Uh, it, it will only be canceled if you cancel it. <laughs> because um, the, uh, the time nodes, they guarantee that they will execute this transaction. But if the time node, let's say, says, OK, I will execute this transaction, we call this uh, a claim. So it, cl it's, it claims this transaction, says, I will execute it, but then goes offline just before it, 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 the time comes for this transaction to get executed. Then, uh, then we just broadcast this transaction to other time nodes, and then it's free for all. Anybody can take it and execute it, they will get the bounty. And, and this other time node is penalized for penalized for um, doing this. When is it? Uh, when do they claim it? Uh, they can claim it as soon as they see it broadcasted on the network. The first time you broadcast As soon as, yes, yes, as soon as somebody broadcasts it. So let's choose an execution window of five minutes. Let's go to the next, uh, uh, the next uh, tab. So now here we, uh, we choose an address to which we want to send this transaction. Uh, so in the, in the blockchain, I'll just copy my address and I'll send the transaction to myself. Uh, but uh, in the blockchain, addresses are these huge hexadecimal. You can use mine. <laughs> Sorry? You can use mine. <laughs> sure, you can. Yeah. Zero X. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so I'll send it to, uh, to myself. So this is all still running on a, on a test network, on the Coven testnet. Since we are undergoing a security audit by one of the guys um, one of a couple of guys from the Ethereum Foundation who are uh, currently uh, in the process of auditing our smart contracts and everything before we release it on the main network. Um, so even if I send you some funds, <laughs> <laughs> it'll still be worthless. Mm. So let's send, uh, let's say, 0 0.1 Ether, which uh, today is it, it's around $60 or something. Um, let's choose a gas price. I will not bother you with the details of this. Oh, okay. So here we can specify the time bounty. So this time bounty is is uh, the amount of ether that we want to reward these time nodes to schedule these transactions. So let's put something like zero point one. Should be enough. 60, Sixty bucks. I would execute it for sixty bucks as well. Um, and we get to the last screen, which is it gives us all the summary, all the details. Total amount is 0 0.2 ether, ether. And we press schedule, or schedule, depends uh, from uh, which country you are. Um, and uh, we get a pop-up. So I'm using the MetaMask wallet, which is a, a Ethereum wallet for, um, for the Chrome browser. We press uh, submit. 
and uh, and the transaction is now deploying. We can <laughs> we have uh, it is now currently being deployed, being mined, and we can press this link. It, it points us to the um, points us to the uh, blockchain browser, where we can see uh, this is an external service. It's called Etherscan. You can scan for all the transactions that have happened or are happening currently on the Ethereum blockchain. And, uh, and we can see that it's still pending, it's uh, waiting to be mined, this transaction. So we'll just uh, wait a little bit. Okay. Where is it going now? To a smart contract? Yes, so a smart contract is being created that holds these funds sort of like, kind of like an escrow, right? So it kind of keeps these funds until uh, the time comes for this, these transactions to get okay. executed. If that uh, uh, time node cancel, I mean, is offline before the transaction, uh, is is going to be is, is there going to be another smart smart contract or the same is going to be executed? No, it, it is only um, so so how it basically works. So once I press the schedule button, there is a smart contract that is created and it is stored in the um, in the blockchain. Once it is stored, there is an event that gets emitted in the blockchain. So there is an event that says, okay, there is a new transaction, and then any time nodes that are currently running. They are, they are listening to these events. They, uh, they wait, 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 they listen. Once an event comes, they're like, oh, oh okay, I want to be the first one to claim this transaction. And then, then they decide to claim it. Once they claim it, they guarantee that they, they will claim be... it to smart contract. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they basically raise a flag on the smart contract. And they also have to deposit, uh, deposit a small amount of ether as, as kind of like security. So I, I like to just in case they don't execute it, they basically lose this ether. And so it's, it is not in their interest not to execute it. Right? So um, we can see that the transaction has been scheduled. There is a, this is the address of the transaction. We are sending 0.1 ETH at this exact time to, uh, to this address. And that is it. And we have officially scheduled the transaction. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> So, what is it for you today? Um, Where is your money? <laughs> uh, for me personally, or? No, for the company, for your profile. Uh, for Chronologic. So, we are all these tools that we build, all these are open source. There is no, um, um, there is no kind of hidden mystery it's like why we. Fee, fee, any, anything. We are building this because, because we need it. There are no fees, nothing goes to us. So, it's going to be open source yes. free? Open source free, purely the time nodes are incentivized. Okay. Um, we do, for example, if you want to use this, uh, this app, anybody can schedule transactions through this uh, web application. But for example, if we go here to the left and we open this time node screen, you can see that we have, um, you can run a time node in your browser as well. So besides running, a, a, let's say, a command line client, you can also run it in your browser. So, um, so for in order to use this, so you see, we, it says your time node is currently stopped. I can start it here, and then it's, uh, we can see some logs here. It started scanning for the network. I started listening to, um, to any incoming transactions. So you can use, um, we basically don't charge anything, but let's say if you, if you want to use this tool uh, on our, um, on our uh, web application, uh, we do require that you hold some of our tokens that you have at Cinema. Yes, yes. Our so you have your own blockchain or it's... Uh, no, 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 it's just uh, ERC-20 tokens. Yeah. So um, we do require this, but this is... Uh, but we have a, a command line file that anybody can run that is open and does not require any kind of proof of ownership of any tokens. So um, the aim is to build this... Um, so if you're asking about the business model of us, right? So the business model is we're building it open because we need this technology for our future projects. But um, but if you want to use some, some of these premium services like running the time of the browser, you do have to you do have to hold some of our tokens. So um, that is basically it. This is the application that we have uh, built. You can use this to run time nodes. We are still um, on the test network, so it is, um, uh, it's only a matter of time, hopefully soon now, we'll be on the mainnet. So, um, 
So we are um, some of the other updates that we have. So, so as I mentioned before, we are undergoing a security audit by ZK Labs, Zero Knowledge Labs. So there are a couple of guys um, in Switzerland, I believe, and um, they do they do smart contract audits. So um, after they give us some feedback on the audit. We are releasing this as a 1.0 release to the mainnet. Um, Sorry for interrupting you again. Uh, how much do you pay for that auditing? Uh, I don't think I should be. Uh, it, it is not cheap. It is not cheap. Yeah, but, uh, yeah but, but I'm not aware of the exact figures. But, okay. uh, it is, it is. You will have to pay from your own pocket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the company. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's chronology, right? So um, we are looking for ways to integrate this um, this type of functionality because this is basically it is kind of like a sandbox. It is uh, it is like any other protocol. It enables you to do other things to find some um, use cases for this. Right. Um, one of the use cases that we already have is we integrated with uh, my crypto wallet. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with my crypto. Um, there was a a clash between uh, the founders, my crypto, my ether wallet, and basically they, they kind of separated. So now we have uh, my crypto is a it's one of the biggest uh, Ethereum wallets currently, and we have partnered with them to allow scheduling transactions as, as well. So um, you can also use the my ether wallet, and we are also looking for other ways of utilizing this. We're also looking for other people who might find some use cases for this technology that we are not aware of that. Um, that we are aware of many things and we already have a number of ongoing partnerships, but we are encouraging developers to join in to build any apps on this or to, to kind of um, find ways to improve this. So um, um, just to mention, there is a number of, of, of problems that we have in the protocol. Um, one of the one of the problems is transaction collision. So, um, if two or more transactions uh, attempt to let's say either claim or execute this transaction in the same block, uh, only one of them can succeed. Uh, the other one, the other ones will fail. They will just uh, they will waste this gas. Uh, another problem that we have is um, is gas price. So, uh, it's hard to predict. Let's say if. Um, so gas gas price is used to kind of uh, incentivize these uh, Ethereum miners to also um, execute these normal transactions on Ethereum. But it's hard to predict if you if you schedule a transaction for in one year ahead. It's hard to predict the, the gas price. Hard to predict is it going to be one GUA, is it going to be twenty GUA? GUA is uh, like a smaller amount of Ethereum. So um, so it, it is. Uh, we would not advise scheduling transactions. Let's say one year, two years ahead. But I think it's pretty safe if you do it like. Um, in sh shorter periods uh, in the future. So, because of these problems, we have started working on um, on something called the Kronos Protocol. So, Kronos Protocol is um, it is everything that we wanted in the Ethereum alarm clock protocol, but we haven't had the time to implement, or it, it has been kind of restricted because we kind of took it over from from Viper. So, uh, so we started building the Kronos Protocol, which is basically. Um, it basically offers everything the Ethereum Lampock protocol has with some additional gas optimizations, with a better claiming mechanism, uh, with, um, it eliminates this transaction collision problem, and, uh, and it offers another thing that is called conditional scheduling. So, so what this conditional scheduling is, it, it is different from this temporal scheduling that we were talking about earlier, when you schedule a transaction that, to happen at a certain time. This conditional scheduling basically uh, allows you to execute a transaction, run a transaction, if a certain event on the blockchain happens. You can, you can schedule a contract to, to execute a certain uh, trade if this condition is met. So um, we do believe that this will be a, huge, a big thing. Um, it is. Um, as opposed to the Ethereum long protocol, which is now close to release, the Kronos protocol is still in the research phase, and we are running into a number of problems um, that basically any other project in Ethereum is running into. Uh, some like uh, people working on proof of stake, on on, on second layer, um, um, on second layer technology, on blockchain interoperability. 
but um, but our idea with this is to uh, explore as much as we can uh, this kind of conditional scheduling. And another thing that we are pretty excited about is making this uh, blockchain interoperable. So with the coming technologies such as uh, the Polkadot network or or maybe Aeon or Cosmos, these kinds of uh, kind of like interblockchain relay networks, um, as they kind of get into a mature state, we plan on transitioning the Kronos protocol to be blockchain interoperable to allow not only scheduling transactions on Ethereum, but any other blockchain that is built or will be built in the future. So this is something that we are really uh, excited about. Um, you can check out our GitHub repository, there's a link down below. And um, you can see we already have a, a part of the code written. It is basically most like a proof of concept, uh, but uh, it is maturing slowly.